This story will cover from then to now and next, all about change, how to turn losers into winners. A griffin vulture is hungry, but its breakfast is hidden behind early morning mist near Tremp in the Spanish Pyrenees. In fact, a group of them are stacked up, waiting. These jumbo jets of the bird world run similar risks to other aviators. Potential for collision, pylons, and the cables between them. It's dangerous flying here. These days, vultures face many problems, particularly in relation to farming. In the past, dead livestock were usefully cleared by them. But now there's controversy and confusing regulations in France and Spain. But here's an answer. Breakfast will be served over there. Welcome to the Tremp rubbish tip, one of the most modern, designed to use and recycle as much as possible of human rubbish. Vultures have become part of that process. An expensive project, a bit of a test case, as the sun burns off the last of the mist and creates thermals, rising hot air currents, more and more vultures collect over breakfast. The warming morning brings even more from further afield perhaps hundreds of miles. That's how important it is to griffin vultures. And Egyptian vultures feed here too. A summer visitor from Africa. Security is tight, a sanctuary of rubbish. The first to get there get the best bits swapping elephants for trucks, both useful providers for this little vulture's lifestyle. Another summer visitor from Africa is the white stork, swapping its diet of living insects, fish and frogs for very dead human waste. But all these scavengers have a problem. Within a short time of being tipped, for health reasons, this rubbish, this food, must be covered, hence the bulldozers the rush. What poisons, what plastics may be swallowed from this brief opportunity? How will further European decisions made far from here affect the griffin vultures and their up, then down, and perhaps up again? with this doubtful bonus. Breakfast is over for the Egyptian vultures too, and the white storks, which will return to their nesting village, a classic example of man and wildlife cohabiting successfully. The local people welcome the storks back every spring, and they have adapted to all kinds of man-made structures. The vultures passing by are not so popular, in fact, for some people, they are distinctly unpopular. Sparrows share this combination of new and old. Storks are friendly neighbours, and so are pigeons living in this man-made cliff. This pair have a mobile home and will follow the nest wherever it goes. Jackdaws will nest within storks' nests, especially when they're as crowded as this. Storks look pretty and are romantic compared with the vultures now overhead. They have been great survivors and seen many changes in the human landscape. They've been admired for their formidable flying skills and thanked for their ability to clean up carcasses. As the countryside below them has been altered, in this case by an aqueduct, they have had to adjust, but now can they? One problem for such large soaring and gliding birds is hitting something in the way. Vulture's eyesight is very good for locating food, but it may become distracted 
and not spot a cable before it's too late. With electricity being brought further and further to remote villages, the risk of collisions increases. There's power for factories too. Up and over. In some places there's a warning on the wire. This large species, the black vulture, is rare across Europe. It's a powerful bird, but as they say, the bigger you are, the harder you fall. And all over Europe there are now more and more wind turbines, which can cause problems for big birds like vultures. This black vulture skull is in the caring hands of Manuel Aguilera Sanz. He and his friends are doing their very best to help vultures in this fast changing world. They are concerned about these unprotected high powered lines. They want the authorities to recognize the problem. After all, we are invading their territory and they've been protected by wilderness for a very long time. A victim of our demand for electricity, and that connects literally with another recent development, water. For hydroelectric power, crop irrigation, and for our towns and cities and villages, carried by a network of pipes and aqueducts. These man-made lakes are a fairly new feature on the vulture's aerial map. On human maps too, great lakes appear, reservoirs. Motorways are carved out, plus yet more pylons in their flight path. Over ancient monasteries, In the past, perhaps food could be found down there, but today it's a noisy landscape with not a sheep in sight. They're even rearranging the mountains, the original home of the vultures. Despite all the disturbance and intrusion, there are some compensations for the vultures. Humans are trying to repair the damage, in certain regulated places, food is provided. Vultures from the reservoir area may come here, or they may not, depending on what's been made available. Best to see is a bearded vulture, the star of the show. But for sure you'll see a red kite, that agile scavenger. The local tourist office in Lombier, in Spain, will help you around the reservoir and guide you to the famous Abbeyon Gorge, where a viewing platform offers a good chance of seeing the elusive bearded vulture. Though it's a big bird, it's also a big landscape, and he may be watching you when you are not seeing him. These French tourists have come to Spain on a motorway, no doubt, maybe to see a bearded vulture. No luck today, just griffins, but this close view is quite a thrill. These birds need no motorway between Spain and France. They can make the journey fast and direct by air. The landscape on the French side of the Pyrenees is much wetter and greener than the western slopes in Spain. Like aircraft, weather permitting, vultures fly over them with ease. From these spectacular nesting cliffs in wet France, griffon vultures can reach dry Spain in no time at all. Vulture cliff is where anyone, young and older, can see and learn about this often misunderstood group of birds. Telescope helps. Craig Martin, too.
This one's much closer, a glimpse of one of Europe's rarest birds. The bearded vulture. With a wingspan the length of a tall man, this is a good way to appreciate the bearded vulture. Wings and eyes make a formidable combination. At the Son Nature Centre in the High Pyrenees, footage from the nesting cave reveals the use of sheep's wool for warmth in early spring when the parents search for bones of victims of the weather. Son hopes that bearded vultures will one day move across joining up with the Alps in France where they're doing well. Sadly, farm animals die, and with a scientific permit, certain centres, like Son, can put those animals out as food for vultures. It may look a bit gruesome, but for vultures it's a way of life, or rather death. Helping vultures is not like helping pretty pandas, but Manuel and his team support them near his home. With great dedication, they feed and monitor the birds in this area from a hide. In this case, waste from a local chicken farm is on the menu. Vultures are very cautious, and even though they are fed here regularly, the hide is very useful. There are other scavengers here too. Feral cats and storks from Manuel's village get an easy meal and black kites swoop in for a snack. Manuel's crusade to help vultures and change their often negative image is shown when he makes regular trips to a spot about an hour away. Some of the birds near his village also travel there, probably in minutes, relying on the vulture internet as they see a feeding opportunity arriving. The more independent bearded vulture would be a great thrill if it decides to come down for the bones at the end of what is effectively a vulture show. An English nature check group helped pay for the event for which Manuel's red jacket makes all the difference. As they move to the feeding place, the vultures start to descend. They know the routine. Local guide Laura Henderson also has a red jacket, but they probably won't get twice as many vultures. The group is lined up carefully on the slope. Manuel then takes the food, sheep today, away from the spectators. It's a case of first come, first served, and there's only so much to go around, and there are lots of vultures. Now Manuel backs away, drawing the vultures closer to the cameras, and still they come in. By tagging them, Manuel and his team can find out where these birds go, and more important, how and where they find their food. This sloping side is important because vultures need a good takeoff spot, especially when loaded with food. So this is the end of the show. Latecomers may still be hungry. The last one leaves, and the Nature Trek group moved to the little village of St. Cilia where a chapel has been turned into a museum about birds of prey, especially vultures. Below the bearded vulture, which sadly didn't land today, Manuel and Laura, who speaks English, fill the gaps in, the part of like the, of the stone, as you can how see they bring back the top, that food to the chick. The Upstairs, there are dioramas of many birds of prey, showing how they live in the Pyrenees. Star attraction is, of course, the bearded vulture, 
with its special ability to eat bones and break them, as in this classic footage. There's even one really remote spot which specialises in bearded vultures, also unfortunately called Lammergeier or Lamb Killer in German. It's not true. Bone breaker is better. Vulture fan Georgie Kamut has renovated part of this village so that for a fee you can more or less guarantee a sighting of the bearded vulture. Yes, the, the feeding place uh, are in the, in the first field. Okay on the left. Let me show you some other shots we got what are interesting. Chris Knights, one of Britain's best bird photographers, has come with some friends and they really got their money's worth with groups of bearded vultures, dark young ones and fine adults fighting over the bones. One of my finest bird watching days in 50 odd years. Great pictures, great experience in a great wilderness. And will this kind of so-called eco-tourism help vultures? Income from hotels, for camping and staying in a village B&B at any time of year. As the snow melts in spring, food may be revealed from the deep freeze. Marmots emerge from their burrows. Skiing's over. All part of educating the visitors all year round. From below to the sky above, the home of the famous bearded vulture. Ski lifts and cable cars and pylons reach almost everywhere now. Often there's nowhere to hide. Melting snow streams long green grass and warming weather. A wet beard. The pair bond is strong. The wide green country is shared by vultures, tourists and cows. Signs beckon the more adventurous to get even further into vulture territory. A fairly new sport called canyoning involves rather daring exploration of the cliffs and gorges of vulture country. A place for another kind of wall creeper too. It's called a wall creeper. From little birds difficult to spot to really big ones that fly straight towards you at eye level. Birders come from all over Europe to find these specialities in the Pyrenees. Here Alcazar forms a spectacular setting for that birder's prize, the bearded vulture with its huge wingspan and diamond shaped tail. At the other end of the scale in Talan there's a very accessible wall creeper, sort of. The real thing can be found on the church with lots of wall to creep on. Whatever their size, all birds live by their feathers. Surprisingly, dust bathing helps and cleans out parasites. The snow finch seems to know that and the wall creeper too. And at the dungeon of the eagles, the public can see preening in close-up. There are four species of vultures in Europe, including the griffin, but around the world there are many more. And here come the big boys, the heavy mob. It's one thing to see them soaring overhead, but something else looking over your shoulder. 
Here at the old castle, whether it's birds of prey flying free high above, or spectacular trained vultures cruising low overhead, there's no doubt people are fascinated by these superb creatures. Vultures take us to the greatest of places, where humans climb on their cliffs so much that they wear vertical paths. Perhaps we envy their ability to soar so easily over the highest, most spectacular peaks in Europe and so silently. And we can join them. Using updrafts along ridges, these days you can birdwatch eye to eye, sharing the same air currents. With more understanding of the world of vultures, perhaps we can share our lives with them a little better.